And coming up, we'll see Kenneth Walker. He really helped drive them a week ago with a three-touchdown game. It's the Seahawks and the Thunderbirds, and it comes your way next on EA Sports. With Mount Rainier in the distance, there are few cities finer on a clear afternoon than this one, and we have a picture-perfect day for football at Lumen Field in Seattle. Today, it's week three, and we've got a good one in store between the Toronto Thunderbirds and the Seattle Seahawks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you look at our home side in this one. Their offense is one that doesn't rely too heavily on just one guy. They like to spread things around as best they can. You're right about that. It's a diverse unit, and they like to run their offense by what they call game plan, meaning each and every week they study the opponent, they probe its weaknesses, and they move the ball around that way. They emphasize who's going to get it based on what they think they'll accomplish in that game. Other teams, they're a system team. They're going to run what they run no matter what. I like this style of offense. It suits them well. It's the first weekend of autumn, and the NFL is in full swing as off we go on EA Sports. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. Leading him out, the former Stanford man. At quarterback, it's Davis Mills. And remember, when he came out of college, he left early. So a lot of people weren't really paying attention to this young man. But he was entrusted with a leadership role early in his NFL career and didn't shy away from it. His goal, continue to prove that there should have been one more quarterback that went in the first round of the 2021 draft. Mills now. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Finding his way home for the sack that time, Taven Bryant. But just not much a quarterback can do there, CD. The pressure was in his face almost instantaneously. Led to a very quick sack. Yeah, that's one we turn to your line and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? Now a fair catch is called for and taken a few yards across midfield. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. And I saw that he had an interesting quote in the research packet that we had after last week's game. It's all on me now. I've got to lead my team and find a way for us to win a game. 0-2, but they're at home. I guess he's going to try and find a way to get the home crowd involved early. First down. On third down, Lynch. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. Jonathan Greener running in to pick up the sack. They just gave up a sack there. And if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And they're just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are. And I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, mm -hmm. maybe a back, someone to help assist. Because right now, the quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. Throwing. Mills. This is Chase Claypool on the receiving end. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 31-yard line. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. The kick by Bass is good, and it's 3-0 here in the second quarter. Well, both teams kind of feeling each other out here, and now after three drives, we have a score with that field goal. Ready? Throwing, Lynch. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. Jonathan Grenard. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Well, it was second long, now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here because they're moving them exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Here's Lynch to throw. Oh, he tries to get it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Derek Stimley puts it, and they take over. They'll set up shot at the 46-yard line. 
third and long that time. He was trying to make something happen, but a little too risky. Well, the field tilted on him. And what I mean by that is what you said, third and long. Got to push it downfield to try and pick up the first down. Defensive backs live for this situation. And they took advantage of the young man right there. to throw Mills he's going to float this one deep right side touchdown Tony Pollard his first touchdown here of the new campaign and the Thunderbirds are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead well forget about the weapons out wide he knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game Charles and he utilized him perfectly on that play and the offense coordinator showed me something on that play Brandon because so often during a game our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets and you wonder if they're absorbing anything he had something specific in mind and he went to it and it worked well it's Ready. from the gun on third down it's Lynch he rifles one that's intercepted. Isaac Yedden picks it. They have been struggling to put points on the board so far. While you don't want to lump it all on the rookie quarterback, he's definitely the root cause. And all rookies, they have those learning experiences in their first year. What they're hoping for is that he can learn on the fly, work through his struggles against his defense, and at the same time, still find a way to put them in a position to win. Third and goal, Mills rolling to his left. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Call it a big loss of 10 there, and it's going to bring up a fourth and goal. Third and goal they decided to throw for, but how about the play defensively? Couldn't find anyone open, left him nowhere to go with the football, had to absorb the sack. The kick by Bass is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say, we should have done better there. Here's Lynch. Screen pass to Charles. So the screen good for only two. Now it's third down. Clock running, and the Seahawks, they're running two, trying to speed up to the line. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Jalen Petrie picks it off. Well, I'm not sure that the wheels, Charles, are coming completely off, but they're shaking a little bit. That's three interceptions, and now interceptions here on back-to-back -back drives. And I think about what a Hall of Fame coach told me that he always told his teams, when a mistake happens, just move on to the next play. Let it go. Hard to do when you've thrown this many interceptions. That's exactly the attitude that has to be adopted. The kick by Bass is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, Charles, I think you'd have to call that a win for the defense. Had the turnover already in field goal range, and they had to settle for three. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and ten just outside the 30. Here's Lynch. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far in second down. I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So that challenge is successful one. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Lynch to throw again. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Uh, he's got it. Touchdown, Seahawks. Jarvis Landry, an 11-yard touchdown. 
And the Seahawks get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. Coaches must really like to see that from the quarterback because he's had the interceptions in this game, but they're able to connect on the touchdown pass. Mills now looks to throw on first down. Going top shelf for Smith-Schuster. And this is incomplete. Oh, he looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. So we come upon halftime with nine points separating these two teams. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. We'll begin up at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, where it was the Ravens who get the win at home. Rashad Bateman, a touchdown catch in the victory. From there, we move to Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City to see what's going on with the Chiefs. And they've got the lead over the visiting Denver Broncos. Patrick Mahomes killing it. Three touchdown passes. Finally, let's get to Indianapolis to check on the Colts at home at Lucas Oil Stadium. And they were victorious in that one over the visiting Atlanta Falcons. Marvin Jones, well over 100 yards with two touchdown catches to boot. We'll move on now to check out the next-gen stats in that first half for our home team. And even though they've got the lead, they're likely going over ways they can improve the running game as they didn't find a whole lot of success in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Seahawks, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Charles, when you talk about free safeties, I think one word comes to mind, range. And we saw an example of a rangy free safety right there. And one thing about a play like this, if it's slow to develop, it can turn out poorly. And this play was definitely slow in developing. And that was one heck of an effort to sprint over there and get the man down before he could make anything happen. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. On second and 11 now, Mills. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked off by Jamal Adams. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So that potentially a turning point here this third quarter. A two-score lead down to one now following the pick six. And that had to be the message at halftime for this defense delivered and accepted. We need to go out there and make something happen. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. So the drive's going to start with Pollard. And some room to run now. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 66 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. You know, I have a pretty good friend, Charles Davis, who tells me that when he sees plays like that, strong runs to the right, reminds him of the 1960s Green Bay Packers. Boy, those were the days back when the fullback actually carried the ball as well as blocked. Then you had a halfback. You had pulling guards, guys who could get out and run. I wonder if next time he might take off and run. Open, and Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 23. Call that a very strong gain of 24. I tell you what, it looks like he's shaking off that pick six just fine. It's not just defensive backs that have to have short memories. Quarterbacks utilize that as well. A much more confident throw right there. The kick by Bass is good, and that will push the lead up to five. So three points, a uh, response there to that opening touchdown of this third quarter. And that's an important three, both in terms of adding to your lead, but also letting the other guys know you're not going to just come out in the second half and take over. Just one conversion and eight tries, not good. This is third and 11. And down he goes, the pressure getting the lynch. 
Jonathan Grenard able to record his fifth sack of the season. Third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield in coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. Downfield on that play, they were unsuccessful. The kick by Bass is good, and the drive will wind up yielding three. And from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. On first and ten, it's Lynch. And that's intercepted yet again, and that could be the backbreaker. Isaac Yinem in there to pick it, and the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Just kind of feel for him right now. Four interceptions, and you can almost see through his face mask. There's a lot going on in between the years. There certainly is, and probably way too much, because now he's probably doubting himself a little bit, wondering what adjustments he has to make. But here's what he needs to do. Get through this game, go to the press conference, meet it head on, and show your teammates you're ready to shoulder what happened today, and you'll be ready for the next game. On second and 11 now, Mills. And he finds a man on the crossing route. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. Here's Mills. Steps away to his left. And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown. What a huge touchdown that was, obviously, here in the late stages of the fourth quarter as they try to put this one away. And, Brandon, when they watch the film after this week, they'll be very proud of every rep if they close this game out. Just a few snaps remaining. They can't relax just yet. And his kick is right there. It's good, and that will extend their lead even further. So the starting field position was terrific following the surprising turnover on downs, but the end result, only three points. One last shot for Lynch. He's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. So this crowd will not go home happy. It's a victory for our visitors. And say what you want about Lumen Field here in Seattle, but for my money, this is the loudest and most difficult place to win in the league when you're on the road. It's very hard. The fan support, off the charts. The way that they make noise and understand when to make noise, they understand the game as well as anyone. And how about what we get in our, our media packets when we start preparing for the game? They have it in their own stuff, right? The number of offsides, penalties, false start penalties that they draw against the opposing team because of that fan support. And last but not least, they designed the stadium to keep the noise in, and it works. But not in this one. They were able to somehow come in here and get that victory. So for our visitors, it's back-to-back -back victories now after the week one defeat as they move to two and one. And they'll return home next week to take on the Carolina Panthers.